Good morning, all you people. All oh, y'all. <laughs> everybody. Good morning, everybody. We knew that this Sunday would kind of be like this. Our youth's out of town. We got a lot of people traveling, things like that. But that's all right uh, because we're here. And the Holy Spirit's here and the Father's here. And like Lee and I were talking this morning, that we're, we're just prepared to do whatever He bids us to do. And uh, so we just kind of invite y'all in spiritually, emotionally, physically in this place to allow God to do what He wants to do. And uh, we're just going to enjoy His presence this morning. We're just going to kind of get into to the service this morning. We're just going to pray. We'll pray all, over all those kids. I think they're probably maybe still on their way. They're uh, tubing up in Helen today, so doing very spiritual things, you know, and uh, just enjoying themselves. So we want to pray for their safety and things like that. So let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you for your presence in our life. And I thank you for our family that's here. Uh, even though we got a lot of people a lot of different places this morning. So we just pray over them and where they are. A lot of people traveling and especially these kids and these leaders who are going up to Helen today. I just pray that you'll give them a good time, a refreshing time to fellowship and laugh and have a good time with one another. And especially for safety, uh, bring them home. Uh, just safe to us, Father. And, and as we're in this place this morning, we just ask that you would just do your work in us and surprise us, Father, with your presence and surprise us with your Holy Spirit and surprise us with uh, just, uh, just words, Father, this morning and, and revelation this morning, Father. And, and we just invite you into this place and give you permission to do whatever you want to do in here today. God, we thank you for all that you're doing for us. We thank you for our church family, our community. Lord, I pray um, over, over our, our school teachers and over our administration as they're getting ready and getting back into it. I'm thinking about even my kids this coming week going, the band cam just stuff is, is starting to move back, God. So I just pray that you would be over them and help them as they kickstart this year and give them protection and give them what they need to do what they have to do this year. Father, we love you. Father, we love you. You are precious to us. And we say, come and do what you intend to do this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we're uh, obviously pretty short musically this morning. So we're going with this kind of like stripped down, acoustic, unplugged kind of thing this morning. So, um, which, which is good because, you know, sometimes it's good to just kind of sit in a what I would call silence. I mean, obviously we're, we're playing, but it's not the big, you know, driving, powerful kind of stuff. So I just invite you this morning to kind of like just rest in the Spirit of God, to just kind of soak in uh, His presence this morning. Before I call, before I ever cry, you answer me from where the thunder hides. I cannot run this heart I'm tethered to. With every step, I collide with you. Like a tidal wave. Rushing over me, rushing in to meet me here. Your love is fierce, like a hurricane that I can't escape. Tearing through the atmosphere, your love is fierce. Can I fail? The only thing I found is through it all, you never let me down. You don't hold back, relentless in pursuit. And every turn, I come face to face with you. Like a tidal wave. Rushing over me, rushing in to meet me here. Your love is fierce, like a hurricane 
that I can't escape Tearing through the atmosphere Your love is fierce You chase me down You seek me out How could I be lost when you have caught me found? You chase me down, you seek me out How could I be lost when you have caught me found? Like a tidal wave, crashing over me Rushing in to meet me here Your love is fierce Like a hurricane That I can't escape Tearing through the atmosphere Your love is fierce I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my tomb Till I met you You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day now your mercy has saved my soul now your freedom is all I know the old made new Jesus when I met you You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness To your glorious day You called my name and I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day I need a rescue My sin was heavy But chains break at the weight of your glory I need a shelter I was an orphan but you call me a citizen of heaven When I was broken, you were my healing But your love is the air I'm breathing I have a future, my eyes are open Cause when you called my name Ran out of that grave Out of the darkness to your glorious day 
you called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day
as you are There's hope for the helpless And all who are astray Come sit at the table Come taste the grace There's rest for the weary And all that endures Earth has no sorrow started worship time this morning he said something that really stuck to me and he he told us that you know sometimes we just need to rest and sometimes we just need to sit at his feet and so when he said that and as I've been thinking through the through this worship time of course, we're talking about the armor of God, and I started thinking about something that, that Greg said last week to close out our service, was that this service, this, this series, not only is a teaching so that we're prepared for the battle by putting the armor on, but also getting us the opportunity to check where the keys in the armor are at. And I don't know about you guys, but when I'm busy, that's when the kinks in the armor start to happen. When I'm moving around, when I'm in the rat race of waking up at early every morning to get to school, or when I'm trying to get stuff done after school, or when I'm going to class over summer break and I'm just really busy that's when the kings and the armor come and I think that's the same for all of us so what I wanted us to do this morning I just wanted us to stay in this idea of rest and I wanted us to stay in this mindset of sitting and relaxing and having this meal together 
Because when Jesus came, He took the brunt of our punishment so that we could rest. He took the beating so that we could rest. And His body was broken so that we could rest. His body was broken so that when our chinks and our armor started to show up, He could feel them. He could feel them. And so as we take this loaf, as we take this piece of bread, and we eat it together as a family, remember His brokenness so that we can find rest. Father, we thank You for this loaf of bread. We thank You for this symbolism of your body being broken so that ours didn't have to. We thank you for this symbol of suffering so that us, what was supposed to be your perfect creation, could be made whole again. And that we could rest in you. And we can sit at your feet and enjoy so as we take this loaf this morning, Father, and as we eat together right now, help us not to forget that. Help us to focus on you. Help us to see you in every situation. And help us to be that strength that you've given us. We thank you, Father, for this loaf. In Jesus' name. after his body was broken after he was beaten after he was put on the cross there was a time there to fulfill prophecy that his bones would not be broken so they took a spear and they put it in his side and when that happened blood didn't just trickle out it poured out willingly for you and for me. And so as we sit in this rest this morning, and as we begin to prepare our minds to hear about how our faith will shield us, and as we sit in this rest, rest in the fact that this blood makes us clean. It makes us whole. It makes us pure makes us perfect in Him. This blood that was willingly shed, the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for you and for me. Heavenly Father, thank you for this cup. This cup that symbolizes sacrifice. This cup that symbolizes the pouring out of your blood to make us clean and pure in you. And as we sit together as a family and as we drink this cup and as we focus on your sacrifice, make us clean in you, Father. Make us whole again in you. So that when the chinks in the armor do come, we're able to prepare them and repair them so that we can get right back in the battle. It's your blood that does that for us. And we're so thankful for what you did for us. We thank you for this cup. We thank you for your blood. In Jesus' name.
as we're kind of at this place of intimacy, I just want to go into a, just a little time of prayer before we get any further. I know we have just thinking about, you know, just across those who are here, some prayer needs that we have, and we just want to lift each other up this morning. I know, you know, Tom's been struggling, you know, and, and he's been under the weather, not feeling well. I know Jet's family still needs some prayer. Uh, Tilly's not been feeling well, and I'm sure there's others. Um, so we just we just want to pray this morning over our family. And um, and so if, do you all have anything that you want to mention as we go through this time of prayer that you want to just bring uh, to our attention so we can lift that up? Else. Anybody have some? You just say you just want to let us know. You don't want to say anything. Hey, I got a private kind of thing going on. It's me. Raise my hand. <laughs> I think we all have stuff. You know, it's okay to say I got junk. You know. All right, y'all. Well, just get close to somebody. Grab somebody's hand. Love on somebody just for a second, and let's just let's just pray. Father, we, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love, Father. We thank you that you're always faithful. And that's kind of what this morning is all about. That, that when we can't lean on anything else and trust in anything else, we can trust in your faithfulness. And so this morning we come and we just thank you. We praise you. We glorify you because of your faithfulness. Even in the moments when we can't see it, feel it, touch it, Father, we know that you are faithful because you are true. You are true. And, and Lord, I just, I just pray that you would just blanket those that we mentioned this morning with that faithfulness, with physical healing, with mental, spiritual healing. God, whatever it is that they need, financial strength or mending of relationships, Father, maybe we find ourselves far from you this morning that you would just <laughs> remind us all we have to do is just turn around. There you are face to face, just breathing your presence in our face. And so, Father, we come this morning as our family just to love on each other. And we lift each other up that you would gird us, God, with your power and your strength, with your Holy Spirit, with your anointing, Father, this morning, with your calling, with your gifts. Father, whatever it is in our lives that need to be strengthened this morning, I just pray that you would just... Give that to us and give us fresh revelations of your word, of your truth, of your power this morning. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. How are we doing this morning? Y'all multiplied since the last time I stood up here a few minutes ago. Thank you for the latecomers. You make me feel good. <laughs> I'll see if I can remember how to do this. All right. Thank y'all for giving me some weeks off. I enjoy my weeks off. But we're blessed. I've told, I've told a lot of people. Uh, I've served very large churches. And for a church our size, we are incredibly gifted with musicians, with people talented musically, gifted in teaching and preaching. And, and it, I, I feel like it should never be laid just on one person uh, because I know some churches where the pastor's gone, they, they don't have anybody else that can preach, and we are incredibly like blessed to have so many people who can preach and teach and sing and, and, uh, and lead in a lot of different kinds of ways, so thank y'all. I think I'm going to take next month off too. I'm just... It's not funny, it's true. As we get started, because I preached the first message in the series, and it's been three weeks since, and sometimes I lose touch with kind of why we're in the middle of a certain teaching. And so I want to just back up for a second, just kind of remind us, let's kind of back up from just something specific today and look at the whole picture just for a minute and remind ourselves why this is so important. You know, we, we talk about the armor of God, and a lot of times it's, it's taught in what? Children's church, Sunday school, VBS, the armor of God kind of thing, and we almost like making an elementary thing when we, when we talk about the armor of God, but it's so, so, so important, y'all. So important. Every piece, not just one piece. This is one of those things where you, you can't pick and choose what you want. This isn't like Bible roulette where I could open it up and say, I want that and not that. 
is something if, if one piece is missing, then there's weakness exposed. And, and listen, the enemy knows that. And he's going to hit you where you're weak. He's going to hit you where there's chinks in the armor or where there's, where there's empty spaces where there should be the fullness of God in a certain part of your life. And the reason this is so important, and even Paul, Paul challenges us here in Ephesians chapter 6 is where we're kind of landing for this. Why it's so important for us to put on this armor of God is because we are in this active and also vicious battle. I mean, warfare, real warfare. You know, we think about warfare in our day and time, and, and we have veterans in the room, guys who have, who have gone and, and seen battle in different places of the world. We see it on the TV, and it's so distant. We, we think about those things. They're very distant. We're thankful for our men and women. They go and fight. They, they preserve our freedom. When if we would just understand that we're, we're in a very similar battle ourselves, a battle for our souls, a battle for our eternity. And if we're lazy, if we lay down on this thing, y'all, it could cost us eternity. It really could. And that's why it's so important because Ephesians 6, 12, just kind of going back and reemphasizing this, verse 12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against spiritual things. It's, it's against evil things. And so often we... Most of our battles in life are against flesh and blood. We make it about politics. We make it about morality and things we don't agree with other people. We make it about soon-to-be college football, you know, and those who are saved and not saved. I won't go any further because it's not season yet. And we make it about silly things that really have no eternal value. But our battle isn't against other people. It's not against other people's ideas versus my ideas. We can have disagreements with people. Our true battle, y'all, is a deep, evil, spiritual battle that's been going on since the beginning of time. And that's why this is so, so important. But be encouraged, and we've been talking about that, that these guys who have preached this so well, that you have been given everything that you need to overcome. Everything that you need to overcome. You're not missing something. Right? God didn't withhold something from you. He's given us everything that we need to overcome. And so it's up to us, y'all, to engage with that. He's given it to us. He's offered it to us. And, and a lot of times if we find ourselves on our face, it's because we haven't engaged with what God has empowered us to be and to do. And that's okay. That's okay. But after you receive this revelation, it's not okay anymore. That we have to be proactive in putting on this armor, putting on truth and righteousness, the gospel of peace. It's up to us to do those things. And so it's imperative that we put those things on. Verse 10 and 11, finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. It all comes from Him. It all comes from Him. It says, put on the full armor of God so that what? You can. You can. I think I can. I think I can. Yeah. <laughs> you can. He says, be strong in the Lord. Put on this armor so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. You know that, that word, the devil's schemes, simply means that he's crafty, that he manipulates, that he deceives, and it, and it literally means trickery. And we talk about this a lot, y'all. He, he has no truth in him. Scripture even says everything that he speaks is what? A lie. He has no truth in him. And so if he's speaking it to you, you have to know that it's a lie. But a lot of times we can't identify that because we're not suited up. We're not suited up. And so it's imperative, y'all, that we suit up every day. And here's the beautiful thing about this whole idea. When Paul says, listen, after you've done everything to stand, all right, after you've done everything to stand, we put it all on, we're girded up in the things of God, what's he say? Stand. You just got to stand in that. Stand in, in that authority. Stand in the mighty power of God. It's not as if you have to do anything else. You don't have to do the fighting. 
You don't have to do the battling. He's already done that. Corey's already talked about that. All we have to do is stand in Him and be girded up with the things that He has given us. He says, after you've done everything to stand, stand and say, come get some. Come get some. I'm ready. Verse 14. So stand firm then. We've talked about this. With the belt of truth buckled around your, your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes with the gospel of peace. And so today we move on to verse 16. And it says, In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Now, this is beautiful. The ESV actually says, In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith. Think about a shield, y'all. None of this does any good if we don't have a shield. I mean, you could be, have the, the greatest army. You could be like Master Chief Halo. Some of y'all don't get that. Some of you do. All right? I mean, you could be, have the best armor ever, but without the shield, eventually, eventually, you're going to be annihilated. The shield is your, your first weapon against attack. In addition to this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And, and the thing about that, you know, he's given this analogy that the arrows are all of the deceit, all the lies, all the things coming against the enemy. And he says this, with this shield, you can extinguish all of the flaming arrows, all of the lies, all of the deceit, all of the things that the enemy could throw against you. He said you can extinguish it with this one thing, the shield, the shield of faith. I look back and um, what that actually looked like because Paul, if you, if you really think about it, you know, the only thing that he had to compare it to and the analogy was here, to, it was to the Roman soldier. And, and that's why I tried to make this look somewhat like the Roman soldier. You know, he wasn't thinking about you know, any, any other culture because his culture was Roman culture. And so when he was thinking about the armor of God, he was thinking about a Roman soldier. And the shield of a Roman soldier really didn't look like this. You know, this is all I could kind of find. The Roman shield, and, and we'll put a picture up on the screen, actually looked like a small door. <laughs> I mean, it was big, where it could shield the, the entire body. And so when they would go into battle, they would get behind this thing, and really the armor that they're wearing was in case this didn't do what it was supposed to do. The shield. And such a shield was not just a defensive mechanism at all i love medieval movies like viking movies anything where like body parts are getting chopped off you know that that's the kind of movies i like i'm sorry i just, I just do maybe i need more jesus Pro yeah i know i need more jesus i just like that era and, and when you think of, and when you watch those movies you you look at the shields and you watch how they battle they use it as an offensive weapon as well it's not something they just hide behind they would take that thing and and wield it and push. And what they would do behind this, this big shield is they would get behind it and the enemy would come and then they would push. They would push against the enemy to go into the enemy's territory. Y'all, we, we can't be these kinds of people who like, you know, hold the fort till Jesus comes kind of people. So I don't want you to think like we hide behind our faith and just say, man, I'm just going to hide behind the truth that I know that Jesus is who he says he is until he comes back. And just hide behind that. No, it's an offensive weapon too. Faith is that we push into the enemy's territory. We push him back and say, no more. I'm going to take everything back that you have stolen from me. I'm going to go into the enemy's territory. I'm not just going to stay where I am, but I'm going to push. I'm going to push. I'm going to take back what he has stolen from me. And so the, this big shield was not something that they would just hide behind. It's something that they would use as a offensive tool as well but one of the beautiful things i see out of this if you've watched this and and um, um so, some of the movies you'll you'll see and I, they probably didn't use this word they do on vikings right and, and they're in there fighting or they do on the movie 300 you know love that movie and the enemy would be coming against them 
and they would take this shield, and as they were, they were like advancing against him, they would say, like, shield wall, right? And what that meant is they all came together, they put their shields side by side so it was a big wall. They would put their shields above them so if arrows were being volleyed at them, they would bounce off. And when they did this, the, the Greek word translated, they call it the tortoise. It's like a big shell. That's pretty cool, right? And so when they were fighting, they would, they would call whatever they called shield wall, and they would get in there, and all these, these flaming arrows would just bounce off, bounce off, bounce off. You know, when I thought about that, that's what I thought about. Man, we can't do this by ourselves. This thing was not meant to do by ourselves. Just because you, you have the shield of faith, just because you're girded up with the armor doesn't mean you can march into the enemy's territory by yourself. We were meant to do this as a community. As a community. So many times in my life, I've had, I didn't even know attack was coming from behind, but I had people who cared about me back there with their shield, shielding me. Because they saw something coming that I couldn't see. It's what we have to do for one another. Gary, every Sunday morning, comes and prays for me before I preach. And for me, that's like him holding his shield behind me. Because y'all, you know, we've talked about this before. You know, if your family's going to fall apart, when's it going to fall apart? Sunday morning, on the way to church, everybody fussing and fighting, everybody screaming, dad throwing kids out the window, and... You know, all that, you know how it is. That's why y'all wrote separate this morning. Because so, you would throw her out the window. You, oh. <clears throat> if something's going to fall apart, it's going to fall apart on Sunday morning. Because that's just, what? That's the deception of the enemy, just what we're talking about. Same thing for pastors, y'all. If, if somebody's going to walk in my office and be negative or say something or come to me, it's, it's on Sunday morning. That's why a lot of times y'all never see me before I preach. I'm hiding somewhere. Because I don't want to see you. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to hear about your problems before I preach on Sunday morning. Because the enemy uses that sometimes. And so Gary uses that opportunity to do a shield wall with me. And to protect me in places that I can't see. And that's why it's so important, y'all, we cannot do this alone. I've told y'all, and I'm bad about this. Those who know me best know that I'm a very isolated person. I don't tell people my junk. I could do it on my own. Don't need you kind of thing. That's just my personality. But I can't do that. We can't do that. That we're meant to do life in community to build these shield walls of faith together to fight against these flaming arrows of the enemy. And so... This shield to the Roman soldier was, was important. It provided this blanket of protection and it was meant to be taken up in all circumstances because it was the first barrier, y'all. The first barrier against the enemy's attack. And so, you know, we're using this as an analogy. We're not really talking about a shield. We're talking about faith. This is faith. Most basic understanding of faith we always find in Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 1, it says, now faith is confidence. Man, I know I could count on this. I know I could take this to the bank in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. For this is what the ancients were commended for. That faith is just this raw belief that nothing's going to waver me from this. Nothing's going to talk me out of this. No matter how much philosophy that you throw up against me, how many arguments you could bring up, you're not going to convince me otherwise. And I like, it made me feel good last week, Corey, because something I've, I've said for years, because I heard this phrase so many times, is that, that God is not a liar. That Jesus is who He says He is. He's going to do what He's promised He's going to do. Period. I'm so confident in that, that there's nothing in this world that's going to convince me otherwise. That's faith. That's confidence in the things that we can't see. Confidence in the things that we don't understand. And I, there's different personalities. There are some people who need to be convinced through philosophical, philosophical arguments 
who Jesus is, and that's okay. But that's not enough. You could calculate Jesus all day long, that 2 plus 2 equals 4, but in the end, it has to be based on faith. That I believe, that I believe, that I believe. I came up during a time and where I just believed. I grew up in church. I heard about Jesus. I heard about the Father. I heard about Holy Spirit. And I just, I just believed. Nobody had to convince me. Nobody had to like argue with me that this is what it is. And it's okay if you're a person who needs some of those arguments. That's fine. Blake's one of those. You know, that's why we like sometimes, you know. But he loves Jesus and he takes Jesus on faith. Faith. That you believe, that you believe, that you believe. Do you believe to the level that there's nothing in this world, nothing that could be taken away from you, nothing that can happen, no tragedy that can happen that would convince you otherwise? I went through some of that when we lost our son. God, why? God, who? I mean, what in the world? And I went through a short season where, God, do you even give a rip? Of course he does. And I discovered that. And that's why my faith is so strong, because there's nothing in this world that would convince me otherwise. That's faith, and that's what it's saying here in Hebrews. Faith is a confidence in what we hope for and an assurance about what we can't even see. Verse 6, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, you will not be a pleaser of the Father. And so when we talk about faith and we talk about this warfare, this is where the, uh, the enemy will attack you first. In your mind. If he could just convince you that God is a liar, that he doesn't care, then your faith is ripped down and everything else crumbles and falls. Things like, did God really say you can or you can't? Did God really say? Did Jesus really mean that literally, that you? I mean, has, I, have, I have these come up against me all the time. Maybe I'm the most unspiritual person in the room. And He will lie to you and He will, he will manipulate you. Hey, just, just a little bit ain't going to hurt. Just, it's okay, just a little bit. About this one, nobody cares. Nobody cares for you. Nobody cares about what's going on in your life. Why would God allow that to happen if He did? And if He can attack your mind, if He could get you to start doubting that Jesus is who He says He is, that God is faithful, then He rips down your whole defense he rips down your whole armor if he could get you to start doubting that God is faithful. And I could tell you, I've had some incredibly horrible days in my life. And probably most of y'all are the same. And those are the days that he will come just kicking and screaming and beating at your door and saying, God doesn't love you. God doesn't give a rip. Nobody cares. Does it even matter anyway? And if he can attack you and get you to start just doubting just a bit. And that's not to say, y'all, it's okay to question. I'm not saying it's not right to question. It's all right to question. But when you start questioning, look for truth. Belt of truth. It's okay to question. So when, when Satan attacks at the, he attacks at the core of our beliefs and he starts spreading this doubt. And that's why... Faith is so important because then faith prompts us that no matter what's going on in life, no matter what lies are coming against us, that I believe in the Father no matter what. I believe that He loves me. And some days, y'all, that's all we got. Y'all had days like that? That's all we got. There are days in my life, even now, the only thing I've got is like, man, I know God loves me. I know I'm His favorite. Sorry. Sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> I know that he cares for me. I know he's got promises that are coming my way that haven't been fulfilled yet. I know that God is for me. He's not against me. And some days, y'all, I'm just telling you, I'm sorry. 
Some days, that's all we got. Is your faith strong enough? Are you fortified enough in your belief that, that He is faithful for that to be enough for you? When we give in to this doubt, we believe that what it has to offer is a whole lot more important and far better than what God promised us. But faith reminds us that though we can't see the fulfillment of God's promises today, He's faithful. You know, when we look at that Hebrews chapter 11 chapter, I encourage you to go back and read it. It's just an accounting of faith and what God did through men and women of faith. Listen to this. Verse 7. It says, By faith Noah, listen, when warned about things not yet seen, this, dude, this guy was a fool. Living in a generation, living in a time when there was no rain, much less floods enough to build this stupid, ridiculous boat. He believed and he had faith enough in the words of his father. He says, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. His faith. His faith. Even though he couldn't see it. Saved his family. By faith, verse 8, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as an inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. Faith. It's, it's probably uh, a guarantee that all of us has met, have missed out on some sort of blessing some sort of outpouring of God's favor on our life because we weren't able to walk out in faith because we were afraid of what we did not know and could not see. When Satan accuses us, faith reminds us that we've been redeemed and there's no more condemnation on your life. See, faith is so important. And faith just is an is a audacious belief. It's all it is. It's an audacious belief in who God is, in the character of the Father, in the morality of the Father, in the words of Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's faith. That no matter, no matter, I choose to believe. 1 Corinthians 13.13 13 tells us that faith is one of the greatest gifts. Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9, it says, for, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, so that no one can boast. Faith is the means by which we can have a relationship with the Father. You can't reason yourself there. You can't fight yourself there. You can't do enough good works. It's just by this audacious belief in who He is that we're saved. Romans 5, verse 3, that we glory in our sufferings. Don't you like that one? Don't you like that one? Yay, suffering. Yay, pain. Right, Tom? We talk about it. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame. I mean, faith in the Father Faith in who He is, y'all, promises us that we can persevere through suffering. And that, that's, where, that's been my biggest battle in life. Persevering through suffering, that we could do that, and even though we go through suffering, and even though we go through pain, that He is still faithful. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 through 5 says this, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Only the ones who believe that He is the Son of God. And the only way to believe such a thing, such an audacious, ridiculous claim that God sent His Son to this world and because of His suffering and death and resurrection, I can have eternal life, that's ridiculous. Is it not? Isn't that a ridiculous claim when you think through human mind, through human standards? That's a ridiculous claim. 
But I know to the core of my being that I will see the Father face to face because of an audacious, crazy notion that He is. Y'all, faith is all we need, really. Faith is all we need. But I want to encourage you in this. That we cannot just stand behind this shield of faith saying, well, I hope it holds. That we have to be people of perseverance, of tenacity. That we have to take that shield and start pressing in to the enemy. That we don't just sit back and wait for the volleys to come. We come and say, this is, (laughs) you know, Sparta. (laughs) This is faith. This is who God is. This is the claims of who Jesus is. And I'm not standing around anymore just waiting for it to come. I'm going to press into the enemy and let him know and put him on notice of who I am in Jesus Christ. Some of y'all, I know, I know, been there, currently there. It's just the enemy won't let up, won't let up. That sometimes our faith wavers because circumstances, things happen. We lose people, don't we, Jet? Things we don't expect. Life happens and we fall and we fail and find ourselves face down deep in the mud, in the dirt. I understand that our faith wavers. Well, here's another promise that He is faithful. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. It doesn't matter where you find yourself in this moment, in this day. He will pick you up. He will wipe you off as a father. Fix those bloody knees. Clean you up. And say, you can do this. You can do this. He's given us everything we need to succeed, y'all. To win. To be successful. To live joyful lives. Not to always be beat up by the enemy left and right. Now it's up to you. Gird yourself in truth. In righteousness. In the gospel. In faith. In faith. And so sometimes I have to remind myself. You know, I'm a pastor, yeah. Yeah. And and sometimes I even expect too much out of myself. And when I fall and I fail, you know, you have this pity party. Well, I failed again. I'm not good enough. And I shouldn't be this. I shouldn't be that. Sometimes we have to put ourselves around people and community with people and say, I need help. And so if you find yourself in a place where you've gotten and you don't know how you've gotten there, and you're weak, you're wore out, you're beat up, you're beat down. I want you to know there's people here that love you and want to journey with you, want to build that shield wall with you. Because we can't do it by ourselves. The first deception, I've talked about this a whole lot, y'all. The first major deception of the enemy is to get you isolated. Thinking you could do it by yourself. Thinking that nobody else cares enough even to come beside you to hear your little jump. Man, let me tell you something. If he gets you off by yourself, he's going to wear you out. He's going to wear you out. So you need to find somewhere and some people. My small group is good for me. They are. And we eat good, don't we, y'all? Thursday mornings, incredible Bible study. They have the the prophetic gathering this Saturday. Y'all come out to that. Find somebody. Lock arms with somebody. You can't do this thing alone. Or he's going to wear you out. That's my problem. This is like transparency time. Is I isolate myself. And not because I'm proud. A lot of times it's because I just don't want to share my junk. And a lot of us are that way. So you can't do this alone. So I encourage you, stand in faith. Be girded up with truth. Walk. Fight. Be the men and women, God, that he's called you to be. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this morning. Thank you, Father God, for truth. 
Father God, I thank you for even on the days, Father, where we're just being ripped to shreds and shields laying on the ground, we don't know what to do. We don't even know if you're faithful. Father God, that you're faithful anyway. That your words are true. That you are who you say you are. You're for sure going to do what you promise you're going to do. You say that if you're for us, who could be against us? So Father, I would just pray that you would remind us this morning of how faithful you are. And all we have to do is just stand in that. It's not something that we could do to become better at. We just have to stand in it. Father, I just pray that you would help us to live in truth, to live in righteousness, to live in the gospel. And most importantly, Father God, to stand in faith that you are not a liar and you are faithful. So, Father, this morning we just thank you for all your love and your patience with us. We thank you for the way that you continue, continue, continue to love us and gird us up, and give us strength. Father, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And all the poor and powerless And all the lost and lonely and All the thieves will come confess Know that you are holy. Well, know that you are holy. And all will sing out hallelujah. And we will cry out hallelujah. All the hearts who are content And all who feel unworthy And all who hurt with nothing left Will know that you are holy And all who will sing out hallelujah and we will cry out hallelujah and all who will sing out hallelujah and we will cry out hallelujah Go on and scream it from the mountains. Go on and tell it to the masses. He is God. Shout it. Go on and scream it from.
yawn and scream it from the mountains. Go on and tell it to the masses that He is God. Hello. Everybody stand up. This isn't going to take very long. I did my rambling earlier. This is our response to simply stand. To simply stand in Him. And when it gets tough to stand, because I know what that's like, you've got people around you that will hold you up. And it will put their shields around you. And when it's your turn, you better put that shield in front of somebody else. So your response today is to simply stand. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you. Um, we just thank you for the strength. The strength to stand. The strength to stand in your presence. The strength to hold up those shields that is faith in you. That is faith that says you are who you say you are and you will do what you say you will do. And so as we leave this place today, let this sort of be our charge moment where we stand and we stand together and we stand ready for the fight. We stand ready for the fight because we know that you've already won. And we stand ready for the fight because we believe in you. It's just that simple. It doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be anything more than we just simply believe in you. And sure, we're going to have questions. Sure, we're not going to understand what's going on. Sure, we're going to wonder, what are you doing? But all we have to do is simply stand. Thank you, Father. Thank you for being Father. Thank you for being God Almighty. Thank you for being our power. Thank you for being love. And it's in your Son's name we pray. Amen.